Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about hexose monophosphate pathway. As we have already discussed that the glycolysis that means the breakdown of the glucose is going to be occurring in three various pathway where we had EMP pathway then HMP pathway and ED pathway. We had gone through the EMP pathway and ED pathway in another part and in this part we are going to discuss about the hexose monophosphate pathway which is also called as HMP pathway or pentose phosphate pathway. So this is what we know that the glycolysis is the first phase of aerobic respiration during which organic molecule is partially oxidized to smaller molecules usually with the generation of ATP and reduced coenzymes and if a substrate molecule is glucose it is initially break down to pyruvate and as I told you microorganisms is going to employ several metabolic pathways to catabolize the glucose to get the ATP and these are the three ways that I explained you where we had gone through the EMP pathway and ED pathway in another part and in this part we are going to discuss about the HMP pathway. So these are the EMP pathway then HMP which we call it as pentose phosphate pathway also then enter the order of pathway. Now let's begin with the HMP pathway. HMP pathway is also called as hexose monophosphate pathway or pentose phosphate pathway or it is also called as phosphogluconate pathway. So these are the other names of the HMP pathway. What are those? One is hexose monophosphate pathway, then pentose phosphate pathway, simply PPP, triple P or all phosphogluconate pathway. Okay. So this uh, HMP pathway is the other common pathway to break down the glucose to pyruvate and this is going to operate in both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. This is what you have to remember. The HMP pathway can be operated in both the aerobic as well as the anaerobic conditions and this is going to be considered as, uh, as an alternative pathway for oxidation of glucose and not for energy. So that means we are not going to get the ATP from this uh, um, HMP pathway. So what is it? It is just breaking down the or oxidizing the glucose for some other substrates but not of further energy. And this pathway where it is occurring mainly in the cytosol that is cytoplasm. And it this going to exist in both the prokaryotes as well as the eukaryotic cells. And the HMP pathway was mainly shown in some of the bacteria like Bacillus subtilis, then E. coli, then Streptococcus faecalis and leukonostal. And this as I told you it can uh, going to be exist in both the prokaryotic and eukaryotic and either it may be a prokaryotic cell or eukaryotic cell it is going to occur in the cytoplasm okay and in coming to the eukaryote this is going to take place in an extra mitochondrial cytoplasm of the cell okay and coming to the uh, phases of HMP pathway so the HMP pathway is going to have mainly two phases how many phases two phases so what are those two phases one is going to be called as oxidative phase and other one is going to be called as non-oxidative phase so what is this oxidative phase or what is this non-oxidative phase let's see so in the oxidative phase there is a generation of NADPH when glucose 6-phosphate is oxidized to ribose 5-phosphate and in the non-oxidative phase the pathway catalyzes the interconversion of 3-carbon, 4-carbon, 5-carbon, 6-carbon that means generally we are going to start with the glucose containing the 6-carbon but intermediate of uh, this cycle is going to have all these types of the carbon sugars for nucleotide biosynthesis or the conversion of excessive 5 c that is 5 carbon sugars into intermediates of glycolysis okay so let's see these two phases in detail then you'll get the clear idea about it 
Now let's start with the oxidative phase. As I told you, this phase of PPP, what is the PPP? Phosphopentose pathway initiates with the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconate. So first of all, the glucose is being converted into glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of an enzyme called as hexokinase or glucokinase. Now this glucose 6-phosphate is going to be converted into 6-phosphogluconate and this 6-phosphogluconate is going to be formed with the help of an enzyme called as dehydrogenase. Whenever you are going to get this dehydrogenase enzyme, removal of hydrogen is going to occur. Removal of hydrogen is going to occur. So from where the hydrogen is being removed? From the NADP+, which is going to act as an electron acceptor. And that's how it is going to yield the NADPH. NADPH. Now, once this has formed the NADPH, now it is going to give rise to the 6-phosphogluconolactone. And now this 6-phosphogluconolactone, a 6-carbon sugar, is then oxidized or oxidatively decarboxylated to yield ribulose 5-phosphate. What is happening? This 6-phosphogluconolactone is getting converted into 6-phosphogluconate and that is going to give rise to the ribulose 5-phosphate which is a 5-carbon compound. Okay. Now this whole step of conversion of glucose 6-phosphate into ribulose 5-phosphate is going to be considered as the oxidative phase. Remember what are the steps that are occurring? One is going to be the dehydrogenase step and then another one is a decarboxylation as well as the again dehydrogenation is occurring. So that means two molecules of NADPH were released and you can observe here no ATP was released. So in the final step of this phase, there is an isomerization of ribulose 5-phosphate to 5-phosphate to ribose 5-phosphate by phosphopentose isomerase and the conversion of ribulose 5-phosphate into the xylulose phosphate by phosphopentose epimerase for the transketolase reaction in the non-oxidative reaction. So from here, it will enter into the second phase that is called as non-oxidative phase. Generally, from the ribulose 5-phosphate, it is going to enter into the second phase. So up to here, it is the oxidative phase. The ribulose 5-phosphate can be converted into ribose 5-phosphate or the xylulose 5-phosphate. So that's how we have finished with the oxidative stage or oxidative phase. So what is happening in the oxidative phase? The glucose 6-phosphate is going to be converted into 6-phosphogluconate and that is giving rise to the 5-carbon compound called as ribulose 5-phosphate. And this ribulose 5-phosphate in the presence of two different enzymes, if it is an epimerase, it is going to give rise to the xylulose compound. If it is a isomerase, then it is going to give rise to ribose 5-phosphate and where it enters into the non-oxidative phase. So let's see the non-oxidative phase. In this phase, enzyme transketolase catalyzes the transfer of two carbon fragments of xylulose 5-phosphate, that is this one, to ribose 5-phosphate, forming the carbon called as 7-carbon compound called as cedoheptolase and glycerolidehyde 3-phosphate. So that means here ribulose 5-phosphate is there with the help of an enzyme called as isomerase. Sometimes it will be converted into ribose 5-phosphate and sometimes it is going to be converted into the xylulose 5-phosphate. Now both are there in the cytoplasm. Now what is happening? Now these xylulose 5-phosphate is a 5-carbon compound and the ribose is also a 5-carbon compound. 5 plus 5 together is a 10. So in the presence of an enzyme transketolase, these two compounds or substrates get together and forms another two types of the compounds. One is going to be of a 7-carbon compound which is called cedoheptolase 7-phosphate and another one is a 3-carbon compound that is glycerolidehyde 3-phosphate. So altogether how many? 
one is seven and another one is three so all together ten so here the ten five plus five gave rise to the seven plus three compound in the presence of enzyme called as transketolase now again uh, this seven carbon compound that is cytoheptolase and glyceraldehyde three phosphate put together in the presence of an enzyme and they are being broke down into two different compounds called as fructose 6-phosphate and erythrose 4-phosphate. So 6 plus 4, again 10. Okay. So transaldolase is the enzyme which is cleaving this 7 plus 3 into 6 plus 4 compound. That is erythrose 4-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. Now this fructose 6-phosphate can enter into the glycolysis and it can give rise to the pyruvate. Then what about this erythrose 4 phosphate? The erythrose 4 phosphate will combine with the xylose 5 phosphate which is present in the cytoplasm and give rise to two more molecules called as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate. See here, xylose is a 5 carbon compound and erythrose is a 4 carbon compound. Altogether, how many? Nine, isn't it? So, in the presence of a transketolase enzyme again, they are giving rise to the six carbon compound, the fructose, and the three carbon compound, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Now, these fructose six phosphate can enter into the glycolysis, and the glyceraldehyde can also enter into the glycolysis. So, this is how they are all going to get entered into the glycolysis and giving rise to the again glucose 6-phosphate and the cycle can continue. So this results in the complete degradation of the glucose 6-phosphate to the molecule of carbon dioxide and the production of great deal of NADPH. The thing that I told you here in the HMP pathway is there is no evolution of the energy that is ATP. But what is the thing mainly that is going to be occurring is NA. DPH. So, this is the overall reaction of the HMP pathway. So, here you can see the glucose 6-phosphate is going to be converted into 6-phosphogluconolactone and which further is going to be converted into 6-phosphogluconate which is giving rise to the conversion of this into ribulose 5-phosphate which is a 5-carbon compound. Now, this 5-carbon compound ribulose is going to be converted into ribose in the presence of an isomerase enzyme or it may convert into xylulose in the presence of epimerase enzyme. So now for example, these two are present in the cytoplasm and now they come together and form the 7 carbon compound and the 3 carbon compound in the presence of an enzyme, transketolase. Now this 7 carbon compound called as cedoheptolase and the glyceraldehyde 3 carbon compound is going to be combined and broke down into further different molecules in the presence of an enzyme transaldolase. Now this transaldolase is giving rise to the fructose 6-phosphate which may enter into the glycolysis and can give rise to the glucose 6-phosphate. Now coming to the other molecule of this one that is erythrose 4-phosphate which is a 4-carbon compound. This 4-carbon compound is again combining with the xylose 5-phosphate which is a 5-carbon compound with the help in the presence of an enzyme called as transketolase and giving rise to the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate 3 3-carbon 3 compound and a fructose 6-phosphate which is a 6-carbon compound. Don't bother about where it is present. So obviously during the synthesis this xylose 5-phosphate is going to be present in the cytoplasm. So now this erythrose is going to combine with xylose that is present in the cytoplasm freely and giving rise to these two molecules that is fructose 6-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now these two can again enter into glycolysis and can give rise to the glucose 6-phosphate all those things. Okay, And in the whole process you can observe we had evolution of only the NADPH but no ATP was generated. So that's how this HMP pathway is mainly involved in the synthesis of 5-carbon compound as well as the NADPH, okay, assimilatory power but not an ATP. So the overall reaction of this HMP pathway is going to be the, if 3 molecules of glucose 6-phosphate, that means, so this is obviously 1, here you are going to get uh, breakdown and we are getting the 3, okay. So 
three glucose six phosphate plus six molecules of three means each glucose is giving rise to two six NADP molecules and three molecules of water and that is giving rise to two molecules of fructose six phosphate one molecule of glycerol dehyde three phosphate so here you are going to get one and here is the two two molecules of fructose six phosphate and one molecule of glycerol dehyde three phosphate and three molecules of carbon dioxide six NADPH molecules and six proton molecules so this is the overall reaction of our HMP path pathway then what about the significance of HMP pathway generally the significance of this pathway is to convert the six carbon molecules into the five carbon compounds or five carbon molecules called as pentoses which these pentoses which are very uh, much essential in the synthesis of uh, ATP coenzyme NAD plus FAD plus nucleic acids even the nucleic acids that is RNA and DNA ribosugar deoxyribosugar all these things isn't it so that's how the HMP is providing all the five carbon compounds for the synthesis of all these molecules and this NADPH produced is a chemical energy in the form of reducing power so HMP pathway is going to act as a source of energy in most of the microorganisms or many microorganisms and this is going to have a greater importance in various biosynthetic pathways like nucleic acid pa uh, synthesis pathways like that okay then the complete oxidative degradation of pentoses by converting them into hexoses and trioses which can then convert or enter the glycolic pathway is going to be the pentose ph phosphate pathway is very essential for cell lacking mitochondria example rbc's for generation of NADPH. So coming to the eukaryotes, RBCs are not going to have any mitochondria. So obviously what they will do, they have to go with this type of the pathway called as HMP pathway for the generation of this reducing power called as NADPH. And in this pathway, we are going to have the generation of intermediate products like trioses that is three carbon compound, four carbon compounds, five carbon compounds, six carbons and even the seven that is pseudoheptolase is a seven carbon compound was generated and this NADPH is also used that is a reducing power is also going to be used to reduce hydrogen peroxide in the cell which is a toxic to the cell so that's how these are all the significances of our hexose monophosphate pathway so this is all about the HMP pathway that we have discussed so glucose 6-phosphate was converted into 6-phosphogluconate which is giving rise to ribulose 5-phosphate and in the presence of two different enzymes that is a epimerase and the isomerase we are going to have the formation of these two and these two combine together give rise to the 7-carbon and the 3-carbon in the presence of transketolase and again they will come together forming the 6 carbon and the 4 carbon in the presence of trans aldolase and the fructose will enter into the glucose 6 phosphate that is glycolysis and then it is moving to the next path uh, one erythrose is going to combine with one more molecule of xylulose which is giving rise to the fructose and the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so that's how you are going to have the two molecules of the fructose molecules and one molecule of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which will enter into the glycolysis again and complete breakdown of the glucose is going to occur. Okay, so this is all about the HMP pathway. Thank you.